Good morning, Kahal Kadosh, Shavua Tov Mevorech to everybody. Today, Monday, the third day of Adar, corresponding to the 15th of February. Today's class dedicated for the Refua Shelema of a newborn baby, Tinok Ben Haya, as well as Simha Bat Esther, among all of the Holim of all of Am uh, Israel. Uh, today's Gemara comes from the tractate of Shabbat, and discusses the misvah of the berit milah. So we know from a basic halacha that a baby that was born through natural means, the milah needs to be done on a Shabbat if the baby was born on a Shabbat. The difference in this halacha is if the baby is born on a Friday afternoon, ben hashemashot. Ben hashemashot literally means is right after sunset, but it's not yet set a kochavim. So in that particular case, depends how many minutes it happened after sunset, because there is a debate in Jewish law, if Ben Hashem Ashot is belonging to the day of Friday or belongs to Shabbat. So therefore in that case, the Milah will be done on a Sunday. But on a regular case that the baby, let's say was born Friday night, way after Shabbat began or way before Shabbat ends and the baby was born through a natural mean, meaning to say no C-section, the Milah will be done on a Shabbat. Why? The Pasuk writes, Bayom Hashemini Imol Besar Orlato On the eighth day, from here we learn two laws. Number one, that the Milah needs to be done during the daytime. And number two, Shemini on the eighth day. But if there is some medical condition or the baby has a jaundice or the baby is a bit yellow, etc., in that case, the Mohel and the doctor will make the decision if to postpone the Berit Milah, etc. We all know that the Berit Milah is one of the holiest covenant that the Jewish people has with Akadosh Baruch Hu. But today's Gemara discusses the procedure and the blessings of the Berit Milah. We know that when it comes to the Berit Milah, there are three steps in the Berit Milah. Milah, Peri'ah, and Metzitzah. Milah literally means the removal, the cutting off the foreskin that covers the Berit. That's called Milah. Peri'ah means to peel. Many times you see that the, the Muhalim's thumb finger has a nail which is longer than the rest of them. And it's usually in, a, in an angle shape. What is that for? That basically helps the mohel that when in the, after the milah, the foreskin was removed. So then he take that skin that's left over and turns it a bit to lower it below the ring. The ring is called the atara, the crown of the berit milah. And the purpose of doing that is to prevent that the foreskin will grow back and if it grows back, that means that the child still is considered uncircumcised. The third one is metzitza. Metzitza, you see that uh, lately, Mohalim uh, use a tube with a cotton gauze or a cotton ball, and they absorb. They create a suction because of the pressure that regenerates the easy flow of blood. These are the three processes of the Berit Mila. Now, the Gemara, uh, without going too much into the technical details, but we know we have the Sandak, we have the, the Godfather, so to speak, which according to our tradition, usually goes to the first boy, to the father of the husband, the second boy to the father of the wife, and the third boy they decide, sometimes could be the father themselves, or a grandfather, or a great hacham, etc. But today's Gemara, will discuss the actual prayers that we say during the Berit Milah. After the Mohel finishes, they usually invite the rabbi to make the Kiddush, many communities do Boremi Neve Samim, and then the rabbi reads a whole lengthy paragraph. So this paragraph that is read in every single Milah of Am Israel, it's coming from the Gemara itself in Masechet Shabbat. So we are going to read the uh, Gemara 
to understand the beautiful blessing because it's a blessing that I think is important for everyone to know. So the Gemara says, we comes and it says, Asher ki deshanu ha-mizvotah besivanu ala mila, and the Aviyah Ben says, Asher ki deshanu ha-mizvotah besivanu lachniso bibrito shel Abraham Avinu. The father says that commanded us the mizvah of entering the child into the covenant of Abraham, our forefather. Technically speaking, technically speaking, the one who do the milah to his son should be to the son, to the baby boy, is the father. That is the proper way. The Gemara in Kiddushin discusses that one of the misvot that the father needs to do for his son is to do the milah on his son. But the reality is that most fathers will not be willing to do the milah to the son. Emotions, excitement, being nervous, etc. And obviously, we allocate or we appoint rather the Mohel to be the one that's going to do the Milah on our behalf. That's why, if you look in some Sidurim or the books of the Berit Milah that have the special prayer that the Abiyah Ben says, the Abiyah Ben in one of the sentences says, and I hereby appoint the Mohel to be my shaliyah, to be my emissary, to circumcise my son. In that case, we activate, we activate the Talmudic aspect that says, Sheluho shel adam kemoto, that a messenger is similar to the sender, and therefore, with this kavana, the mohel does the berit milah for the uh, newborn baby. And then the kahal, which is uh, around the berit milah, and we know that the concept of the Berit Milah not only is a very joyous occasion, uh, but it's a great moment for Teshuvah. And this goes all the way time of the time of Eliyahu and Navi, as we discussed in the past. And there is a, a, a segula, a spiritual benefit that it says that when a person goes to a Berit Milah, and obviously has the proper kavana of Teshuvah, that the presence of Eliyahu and Navi cleanses everyone in the audience. And this is written in the holy books. And the kahal, those who are present at the ceremony of the Milah say, Keshem shenichnas laberit. The same way that he entered into the covenant, kach ikanes la Torah velachopa al ma'asim tovim. Also, he should be entered to bar mitzvah, that means Torah, marriage, and good deeds. And the question is, why such a blessing? So first of all, the Hidushe Haran says that this sentence is actually a blessing for the parents. Meaning to say, the same way that you were alive and well to, to be able to circumcise your son, may Hashem give you life to be in his bar mitzvah, may Hashem give you life to be in his wedding, and may Hashem see you, sees, uh, enables you to see how he develops into a wonderful member of Am uh, Israel. That is one explanation. Another explanation on the cuter side is the following. I ask you a question. When you came to organize the Berit Mila of your son, okay, who made the decisions? Usually the husband with the wife, the wife and the husband. The child does not get involved. The child just comes, they bring him, and he does what he does, and chalas. So in a way, they say, like your son was not involved in the Berit Milah events, also let your son not get involved in anything. This way you and your wife do it without having to worry. It's a cute pirush. It's not the realistic purpose of the Gemara, but I recall hearing this in a Berit Milah many years back. But the first opinion of the Ran is the actual meaning of this sentence. We are blessing the parents with health and longevity to be able to experience not only the Milah of the Son, but all the happy uh, events that come across to the life of a person. And then we have the Beracha that uh, we say usually in the Berit Milah after Bore Peria Geffen. And it says as follows, Asher kidesh, Baruch Atah Hashem Elokeinu Melech HaOlam, Asher kidesh yedit mi beten, who sanctified the beloved one from the womb. This refers to 
Isaac Avino. Isaac Avino was born and he was the first Jew to be circumcised at the age of eight days old. Hog Bishero Sam. And he placed the mark of the decree on the flesh. That means Deberit Milah. What does that mean? The Marsha explains something fascinating. All misvot that we do are usually separated from the human body. What does that mean? For example, a man is going to put on tefillin, right? So the man needs to take the tefillin and put it on. A lady is going to light the candles. What she needs to do? She needs to go and light the candles. Meaning to lulav. You have to pick up the lulav and shake it. Meaning to say that the mizvah and the body of the person are not together unless they are doing the mizvah. Exception, berit milah. Berit milah is the mizvah that never leaves the human body. And that's why so many things were said. And we discuss for six weeks consecutively the topic of Shemirat Haberit, the, the covenant, the protection of the covenant, the protection of the Milah, eh, etc. Why? Because this is a piece of holiness of Kedusha that is in our flesh. As we say in the Birkat Amazon, Be'al Beritecha Shehatamta Bipsareno, on your covenant that you stamped on our skin. Continues the Gemara, and it says, Bese Esaav, and his offspring, meaning to say all of us, meaning to say the Jewish people, Hok Bishero Bese Hatam Beod Berit Kodesh, sealed with the sign of the Holy Covenant. We know that in Judaism, there are three covenants, the Berit Milah, the Tefillin, Shabbat and Yom Tov. So always we need to have a two covenant series. Ladies don't need to have two covenants because they are ladies, the carriers of Neshamot into the world that makes them a guaranteed covenant plus the uh, Shabbat, plus the fulfillment of family purity that gives the covenant to the ladies as well. So it says, Alken, therefore, Bishar Zo, in the reward for this Mizvah, El Hai Helkenu, Hashem, our God, our rock, Tzave Lehasil Yedidut She'erenu Mishahad, please give the Zechut of Am Israel to be redeemed from destruction. And there are two explanations what kind of destruction are we referring to. One opinion may say the continuity of the Jewish people. Other opinion says the unfortunate word known as in Judaism has Gehinam. So it says that the Zechut of the Berit Milah protects the person to pay a visit to that location. Leman Berito Asher Sam for the uh, covenant that he has placed in our flesh. Baruch Atah Hashem, Koret Haberit, blessed be the one who establishes the covenant. This is the first uh, part of the uh, Mila. The second part is with the actual naming. Make sure that this child remains alive for his mother and father and he should be called in Israel. And then you have a few blessings, a few verses of blessings. And then at the end, we express our gratitude to Hashem by saying, Hodula Hashem Kitov Kila Olam Hazdo, a statement of gratitude to the Almighty. And we say, for example, Moshe Ezea Katan, Moshe, this child, Hashem may raise him. And the same way like the parents brought him to the Milah, May he be raised to Torah, to Chupa, or Ma'asim Tovim. And then different communities have different traditions uh, when it comes to uh, the final paragraph of the Berit uh, Mila. The Gemara also brings a parallel blessing whenever a person goes through the topic of conversion. So we know that for a man, a Gentile, 
who wants to become a convert, he needs to go, besides the learning, he needs to also do the milah and do the mikveh. So these are the three requirements that he needs to fulfill. So also there is a, a special blessing that the rabbi or the bedin will say whenever a Gentile goes to the circumcision and just changes some of the of the of the nusach of the text, which is uh, written also in this very same Gemara, Gemara Shabbat uh, 137b. Uh, so that the Zechut of Eliyahu and Navi, whenever he comes and to in, informs us of the but informs Hashem to Akadosh Baruch Hu, may he also be granted permission to be able by Ezat Hashem uh, to be Mevaser de Geula. As the verse writes in uh, the book of Malachi, Hine Anochi Sholeach Lachem et Eliyahu and Navi. Eliyahu and Navi will be the Malach, will be the one who will usher Mashiach's survival into our life and by Ezat Hashem. It should be speedily in our days. Amen. Okay. Let me just switch the book today. Just give me a moment. Pirasha Teruma. Okay, we will discuss for a few minutes Perashat Teruma, not on the content of the Perashat per se, but actually on the connection of the Perashat with a certain area of our life like the concept of prayer. So we know that in this week's Torah portion, the Pasuk talks about the building of the Mishkan, the tabernacle that was a mobile tabernacle in which Am Israel built and donated in a record time in the desert. And there were many vessels in the Mizbeach, not Mechila, in the Mishkan. Among them, we have the Lechem Apanim, or the shulchan, the table, where the 12 breads were replaced every Friday. We had the Aron Kodesh, the ark, that contained the second set of luchot given to the Jewish people in Yom Kippur, as well as the broken set of luchot, the way we learned uh, last week in the Gemara. And additionally, besides the, these elements, and the Mizbeach, which is also discussed in this week's Perashah, we come across the menorah. Menorah, a massive candelabra made out of gold, literally, it needed to be chiseled out, a single piece, all the shapes and all the flowers and all the almonds and all the designs that the menorah had were hammered out from a solid piece of gold. And this is one mitzvah that is found in this week's perasha. Comes the Benishai. And it says, I believe, he says the Ben Ishai, that the menorah, in a sense, is connected to the prayer of the Amida. What is the Amida? The Amida is the prayer, as we learned yesterday, that we stand up, we put our feet together, so it looks like the feet of the angels, and we pray to Akadosh Baruch Hu. In a way, the menorah, could be the same. I have a homage nearby. So you look at the picture of the menorah. There are, you see how this is the center pole of the uh, menorah and these different designs that the Pirashah describes. Continues the Benish Hai and it says that the, the Zohar Kadosh explains what does it mean that the Amida is connected to the menorah. So it says the Pasuk writes, concerning the menorah, Zahav Tahor, that the menorah needed to be pure gold. Comes the Zohar Kadosh and it says, Zahav Tahor, pure gold, Leshon Sah, Belo Taot. 
says that a person needs to make sure that a person is able to read the Amidah properly without any mistakes. Miksha ta'ase ha menorah. A menorah was made out of a solid piece of gold. And from that solid rock of gold, everything was designed. What does it mean? Delacha says, Shelo yafsik betoch tefillah ha'amidah afilu bidbar sheba kedushah that once the person begins the Amida, you're not allowed to interrupt. This is the Lachale Maase. We begin the Amida, we don't interrupt the Amida. Yerecha, then you have the legs of the menorah and the, the poles of the menorah, and we have the different elements of the menorah. For example, we have the Gevi'eha, we have the cups, we have the knobs, and we have the flowers. So the Benish Hai writes that each and every one of them refers to the different words of the Amida and the different blessings that we have in the Amida. The Amida originally was called Shemona Isre, the 18 blessings prayer. Later on, an additional prayer was added. This is the prayer of Laminim Belamalshinim. This was the Takana by Shemuel Katan in the time of Rabban Gamliel, that they added a prayer for the informers and the heretics of Am Israel. And it says that till that moment, there was no need for this type of prayer. But regretfully, during that time, Bene Israel was afflicted by different characters and different types of personalities to the point that there were Jewish people, God forbid, informing against other Jews to the Roman Empire. And that brought a tremendous amount of disaster and dramas to Am uh, Israel. But comes the Benish Hai and it says, if you look at the shape of the menorah, I show it to you before, we have the center pole of the menorah. Then we have three half circles, or depends which design you follow. If you follow the Rambam, Right, Maimonides or Rashi, the shape of the menorah is in a V shape. And if you follow the way the design I show you is in a semicircle, semicircle versus V shape. Both of them go to the same conclusion. And it says in the name of Rabbeinu Ha'ari that we have the following concept. And it says, the first three poles to the right are connected to the first three Berachot, Abraham, Ishak, and Yaakov. Hesed, Gevura, Tiferet. These are the three Midot, kindness, self-control, and beauty or truth. Then we have the final three Berachot, from Modim till the end of the Modi of the Amida, we have three Berachot, and it says the Benish Hai, that this represents Nesach, Moshe Rabbeinu, Aharon Kohen, and Yosef HaSadik. And the Berachot of the middle are represented to the center pole of the Amida. Very powerful and very interesting uh, concept. Comes the Benish Hai, and it says as follows, that if you make a calculation... I'm going to start doing this in writing. We have 19 berachot in the morning, 19 berachot in the afternoon, and in the evening, 19 berachot. That gives me the magic number, 57 blessings. Okay? Now, all together, it says the Benish Hai, but one minute, in a 24 hour cycle, we have Shete Hazarot. We have two Hazarot of the Amida. If the Amida is 19 Berachot, how many Berachot is the Hazara? 19 Berachot. So I add an additional 19. So you do 19 times 5, 45. 95 blessings. Wow. The Benish Hai says 
that when a person prays with a minyan and says the amidot and answers the amen of the hazara, we cover 95 blessings. What is the secret of this? So he says the Benishai, the number 95 is the gematria of the word hamaim. Hamaim he five, mem 40, yod 10, five, 40, 10, 40. That's 95. Comes King Solomon and it says, Shelah lacht mecha al pene hamaim. Cast your bread over the water. Ki verov hayamim timtza ennu. Because eventually you will find the bread. What does it mean? Says the Benish Hai. The shefa parnasa tova la tahtonim. It says an abundance of great blessing will be found for those who pray and also brings a tremendous blessing every day because the blessing to mankind is delivered daily. What a beautiful uh, concept. And that's why it says, Shelach lachmecha. What's the meaning of the lachmecha? Hu mazon shelcha. This is the bread that you need every day. Al pene hamayim on the waters, the tefilot, and the hazarot. Ki verov hayamim timtza enu. Every day the beracha comes down to the person. Meaning to say that a person cannot say, you know what, I prayed yesterday, I don't have to pray today. Or I prayed too long today, so tomorrow I don't have to pray. Says the Benish Hai, based on this concept of uh, beracha, this is what great beracha comes to the person's life by praying properly, etc. And that's why it says the Benish Hai, there is a verse that says, the Hashem HaYeshua, the redemption will come from the Almighty. Al Amecha, upon your nations, Birchatecha Sela, your blessing is forever. Comes the Benish Hai and it says, Sela, numerical value 95. This refers to the Jewish people. It says the Benish Hai that when a person prays the three times a day and listens attentively, to the Hazara, and that is one of the reasons the Allah says that we do not speak during the Hazara because the Hazara brings down a tremendous amount of blessing to the person that can only be delivered through the Hazara. Meaning to say, the way the Benish Hai will say now, the prayer of a person reaches a certain level, but once the Hazara is done, then that level doubles up to bring more Beracha to the person. And that's why David Amelech says in the book of Tehillim, Ibdu et Hashem besimcha. Serve God with joy. Comes the Benish Hai and it says, if you look at the word besimcha, means with joy. But if I take the five letters and I juggle them around, so now give me behamisha. Ibdu et Hashem behamisha. Serve God with the five amidot. Three amidot quiet and two amidot of the hazara. As the Pasuk writes, Or Zaru al Sadiq, Uli Shelev Simha, and therefore the Benish Hai writes that part of the Amida is done quiet. But when it comes to the Hazara, we say it loud because we're not concerned of anything. We did our personal prayer to Akadosh Baruch Hu, and we say it together with the Hazan. And that's why it says the Pasuk, Uli Shelev, those that have a straight heart. The Benish Hai writes, this refers to the Sibur. Uli Shrelev Simcha. Al Tikre Simcha Ella Hamisha. The five Amidot that can only be done if a person is praying with a, a Sibur and the person listens to the Amiracha that a person, the Benish Hai writes, because of all these blessings, Sarih Lei Zaher Meod Al Ze. The person must uh, be careful in praying with the minyan, be attentive to the hazara, 
as he said in the beginning, the Hazara is the part of the prayer that actually delivers our particular prayer. So by Ezet Hashem, we'll finish the class here. I'm, 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 I'm a bit, you know, under the weather, but nothing to worry about, Baruch Hashem. So he that's on that the Shi'ur of today, a bit of congestion, that's all, that the Shi'ur of today brings a Fuah Shalema to Tinok Ben Haya and Simcha Bat Esther among all of the Holim of all of Am Israel. Ba'ezat Hashem will resume uh, the recording tomorrow morning, Ba'ezat Hashem at the 9.15 uh, class via itorah.com. Uh, Have a good day. Shavuot of everybody.